Hi everyone, I'm Rosemary and in today's video I have another Dollar Tree Organization Hacks video. And for this episode of the series, I have ideas to help out with laundry. And anything to lighten the load, pun intended, of this chore are always welcome. As always, we'll be using everyday Dollar Tree items and altering or enhancing them in some way to create actual hacks by combining them with other items, turning them sideways, upside down, or using them in a completely different capacity than their intended use to find creative and inexpensive ways to get organized and make life easier. Let's begin with these nylon mesh laundry bags. These come in one large bag to a pack or three small bags to a pack. But for this hack, we'll be using the large bags. I'll also be using some plastic hangers and zip ties. And if you're using the Dollar Tree plastic hangers, you'll need to remove this section right here. From here, I took one of the hangers and laid the open end of the mesh laundry bag on top. Next, I took the back side of the bag and wrapped the material around the bottom of the hanger. I took a zip tie and ran it through the mesh and around the hanger to secure it on one side and then on the other. Next, I took the second hanger and laid that one on top, but in the opposite direction, zip tying first at the top of the hook and then to either side of the hook. Next, I used six zip ties across the bottom, attaching the two hangers together with the back side of the bag between the hangers and running the zip ties through the mesh in the bag, wrapping and securing the zip tie around the hangers. And I repeated this again for a total of six zip ties. And then once that was complete, I went back and snipped off all the tails. This makes a great hanging laundry bag and you can make just one and use it as a hamper, but I actually made three to use as a laundry sorter for darks, colors, and whites. To make labels, I used these little chalkboard picks from the Dollar Tree. I snapped off the sticks, then used E6000 to glue to the top of the holder. To hang, I used some screw-in hooks. Now, since my laundry room is still in the part of my little fixer-upper that still needs a little fixing up, I have this thick wood paneling on the walls, so I can screw right into the wall. However, if this was drywall, I would have needed to use anchors. Also, I placed the hook pretty far down on the wall so that once hung, the bottom of the bag kind of sits on the floor so that it can absorb most of the weight of the bag as it gets filled with clothes. And believe me, it will be filled with clothes, lots of clothes, more often than not. Now that I have my laundry sorted, it's time to do the wash. I like using these large detergent bottles that have the little dispenser on them. What I don't like is the after drip that makes a mess underneath. I saw these drip catchers that you attach under the spout online and thought they were pretty neat and not too badly priced since they do come two to a pack, but then decided to do a DIY version. To make, I took an empty disinfecting wipes container and cut it in half. I then cut out a two inch strip down to about one inch from the bottom, then cut around the base. I cleaned up any jagged edges with scissors and also rounded out the strip. I then went back and cut a one and one half inch by one inch rectangle in the strip near the top. I used some Goo Gone to remove the black lettering at the bottom. From here, I just popped the spout through the hole. And now I can just place my cup, fill it up, and then any drippings that happen after that will be caught in the drip tray instead of on top of my washer. As for items like stain remover sprays, gels, and pens, or items like dryer sheets and balls or other accessories, magnets, hooks, and screws can be used alone or with containers to keep these miscellaneous items right on the side of a washer or dryer or on nearby walls. When using magnets, the strength of the magnet does matter for these hacks to be effective, depending on the size and weight of what you're pairing it with. To increase strength, you can double or triple weaker magnets if they have the right polarity and will stick together like these Dollar Tree craft magnets or add multiples across the surface if they don't. You can also purchase magnets that have extra magnetic strength. For example, these hook magnets found in the office supply section are super strong and can easily support the weight of even this full bottle of stain remover. Try to catch this middle section underneath for the strongest hold. You can place two across to hold something like a bleach pen or attach individual magnets right to the side of a container and attach directly to the side of the washer. Alternately, you can use the hooks along with slotted baskets. Just slide the hooks through the holes. I'm going to use three hooks here to maximize the weight capacity. I got this one at Walmart, but Dollar Tree also sells multiple slotted baskets that would work and make great options. In these baskets, I'm storing dryer balls and dryer sheets. 
Now, for one reason or another, you don't have space on your washer or dryer sides. These baskets also work great with hooks or screws in cabinets or on nearby walls. Now, an even more convenient holder for your dryer sheets would be one of these magnetic files found in the teaching section. Unfortunately, the magnet on them is not very strong. To fix this, we can just reinforce with some of the craft magnets. You could glue to the back, but I just like to place them right along the inside and the magnetic force will hold in place, then just fill with the dryer sheets for a super handy dispenser. Another great use for those craft magnets is to attach them to the backs of clothespins. Then when you encounter a wayward sock, you can hang it on the side of your washer or dryer until its mate is found. But why is it that sometimes we never do find its mate? Where on earth do they all go? Are they all somewhere having a party? I don't know. I'm starting to think that may be the case. Comment party socks if you think that's a possibility. Or let me know if you have another theory. Here's a theory. Is it possible that they have some terrible reaction to the detergent, bleach, or fabric softener and simply dissolve? And the only remnant is dryer lint? I don't know, maybe, but wherever it comes from, dryer lint is definitely a thing. And here is an idea for a handy magnetic lint receptacle. Take one of these Dollar Tree scallop containers from the party section and simply add a magnet to the back. I have these large round ones from Walmart on hand, so I use that. You can also add a label if you like. I just printed this one on my computer and then use packing tape to affix it to the inside of the container. And that's it. It's ready to hold all that lint, or for all we know, the tragic remains of our lost socks. Now, another possibility may be that the darn socks just fell to the side or behind the washer or dryer when we were changing loads. A good way to prevent this would be to pick up one of these laundry guards from Amazon. What a great idea. They break apart into sections and are held in place by magnets, so you can customize to your needs. However, since I would only use one on my dryer and since my dryer goes up underneath the stairs in the back, I would only need it along the sides. So it didn't make sense for me to get a full set. To make a DIY version that looks similar to the Amazon version, I thought about cutting out the bottom of a Dollar Tree plastic basket with wire cutters. And the baskets also come in white too, but I'll use blue here for illustration purposes. For the frames, I thought I would use the wood on the Dollar Tree six by eight canvases and you could get enough from the grid on the basket to make two panels by cutting the grid to size and gluing it to the wood frames. However, in order to have enough strength to hold back the weight of the clothes, the magnets would have to be super strong. Maybe the metal hooks ones would work, but I would need three or four per panel and now it just becomes cost prohibitive, not to mention the funky hooks sticking out the side. But I love the idea and decided to put function over form and employ the help of the trusty pool noodle. I simply cut it in half and to join the two pieces together, um, I could have used a glue like E6000, but I'm going to use some of this double-sided mounting tape that I get on Amazon. It's quick and it'll hold the bond well in this application. The other good thing about using the pool noodle is that it's customizable. So in my case, I can cut on the slant of the steps above my dryer. I'll make two sets, one for each side of the dryer, and then, since I don't plan on moving this around with any regularity, I'll use the double-sided tape to attach the pool noodle to the dryer instead of magnets. I just love this product. It will hold in place even with the weight of the clothes pushing against it, but when I do want to remove it, it will pull right off without damaging the dryer. But I can't probably say as much for the pool noodle. It'll probably trash that. Now I can empty the dryer and keep the cycles going and or have a secure folding space without the issues of items falling over the sides. In the event the plan is to hang clothes coming out of the dryer, then a hanger holder may be in order. I made this one from a Dollar Tree paper towel holder and those trusty magnetic hooks. Alternately, you can use hooks or screws to attach to the wall. But to attach to the dryer side, I placed three hooks, then slid the paper towel holder on. From here, just load with hangers to keep them handy and at the ready. Now, if you have certain clothes that never see the inside of a dryer, especially delicates, and would prefer something like this to hang and air dry, then here is a Dollar Tree DIY version. To make, I picked up a wire wreath form from the floral section, a pack of clothespins from the laundry section, and these tiny zip ties from the hardware section. These zip ties usually come in a pack with both the tiny red zip ties and even tinier black zip ties. 
I used the red zip ties and fed the end of one through the metal clasp on the clothespin, then looped it onto the outer edge of the wreath form. I placed three clothespins per section around the outer edge and then two clothespins per section around the inner loop. And then here is what it looks like once all the clothespins are attached. And like I mentioned, I did do three per section on the outer rim and two per section on the inside, but you can do what works for you. They also move around so you can move to make room if needed. From here, I'll attach a plant hanger chain and Dollar Tree does sell these. I bought one, I just don't know where I put it. So I actually had to take this one from my plant outside. But um, in any event, uh, all you need to do is hook them onto the wreath form and it's ready to hang from a shower curtain rod or other area to air dry delicates and other small clothing items. Laundry areas are also where we tend to store irons and ironing boards. However, if cabinet space is tight, then this shelf and ironing board holder hack may be useful. To make, I used two of the Dollar Tree metal hanging plant brackets and the wood from one of these hanging shelves. The shelf will sit on this flat piece inside the bracket and the ironing board will go in these hooks. My ironing board will actually fit on the hooks as is. However, if you need to widen the hook a little, you can easily do so with some pliers. Next, the shelf can be attached to the bracket using E6000 glue. Just place some on the bracket and sit the wood plank right on top. Once the glue is set, attach the shelf to the wall or using anchors if necessary. A folded ironing board can be secured onto the hooks and the shelf makes a great home for an iron and spray starch. And if you'd like to see more great organization hacks, check out the other episodes in this series and you can find the full playlist by clicking here. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.